Hello everyone and welcome to today's session. I'm really excited to be with you all. This is my first live stream utilizing this medium and I hope everything goes well. We are going to di dive deep today in a very important topic which is data visualization using Wolfram language. As the age of big data kicks into high gear, visualization is an increasingly key tool to make sense of trillions of rows of data generated every day. A good visualization tells a story removing the noise from data and highlighting the useful information. Therefore, I have thought of conducting this live course with you all and the objective is to learn how to take the data visualization to the next level within Mathematica. So that said, it is aimed to those with no prior experience and each chart uses short and simple code. So if you have never used Mathematica before or have never written a line of code in your whole life and you want to start making faster and more attractive plots today, you are in the right place. Here is a peek of what we are going to, you will be able to develop today. Before I kick start, I wanted to let you know that the recording of this session will be available and feel free to ask any questions in the comment section. I'll try to take the questions and give the answers today. If I'm unable to do that today, I will be giving another session and answering your questions in that session. So let's see what data visualization is. So data visualization is simply all about simplifying data, cleaning your data and then presenting that in a graphical format. That will help your, uh, help to understand the insights about trends, outliers, and the patterns which are hidden within the data. But the most important goal is to help you and the stakeholders to make well-informed data-driven decisions. So let's move forward and see how I'm going to pace my session today. So I tried to squeeze many things within one session, but it is such a huge topic that I'm unable to convert everything in, in a small pocket of time. So what I plan to do is I've, I've divided it into a couple of sections. And today I'll call it the part one, where I will be working with you how to load data, how to review and clean the and simplify the data in Mathematica. Then we will study about line charts. We will also discuss about two axis plots. And then we will go and dive deep into a couple of real life uh, exercises. And the part two is about I will be answering your questions if I am unable to do them today and then I'll be taking forward and discussing charting and the information visualizations. Then I will be talking about distributions, how to, if your data is uh, uh, containing some statistical uh, data, how you can represent that in form of histogram, density plots and distribution analysis. And then that will also have a couple of exercises where we'll be using a real life time data and see how the analysis is can be done and how the visualizations can be done on that specific type of data. And the part three, if you showed interest and you motive, keep me motivated enough, we'll talk about how to do financial vi visualizations, how to do geographic visualizations and doing some dynamic interactivity of your data itself. So let's start.
Some basic rules for all of those who has never used Wolfram language before. Three rules to remember. The first letter of the function is always capital. You use square brackets for function arguments and you use curly braces for list and ranges. Let's take a couple of example of here. So my function is plot. So P is capital over here. Every function will have a function argument. What I want to do plot. Sign again is a function. It has a function argument x and then I want to give the range where x is maybe from minus to pi to to pi. And you can see this is all you need. If you need to give a list over here, like in a list of functions like sin x and a cos of x, you can also do that. But then this has to be wrapped in the curly braces so that Wolfram language understand that this is a list of functions. And you can see that. So these are the basic rules you need to understand to learn how I'm going to show you the data visualization in next of my examples. So the first thing which is very important is how to load your data on which you are going to do visualization. So there are many type of import formats which you can directly call into Wolfram language. And if you write this function like a dollar sign import formats, you can see these is the list of the extensions of the files that can be directly imported in sound Mathematica notebook. And you see these, these are the huge numbers which you can do. So let's go forward and see how you import. So I'm going to tell you about two basic functions. One is called an import function, which basically just import the data from source and it will return it as a Wolfram language. The another way will be semantic imp import, where it will take your data, but now the Wolfram language will try to uh, import it semantically so that it will be created and automatically created into a data set object. The advantage of the data set object will be that it will be a structured data set based on hierarchy of list and associations. And in my today's session, I'll show you the differences of how the data looks like and how you do analysis and you visualize that when you are using an import function and then how easily it is when you import your data in the form of a data set object. So let's take an example. So for example, you have an Excel file which has certain value over here in, in the Excel file and you want to import that. All you need is to do is you need write a function log called semantic import. Then there are square brackets and you just go on the top, say insert and file path. From file path, you can select which file you want to get over here. For example, you want to have this FIFA file, you can just say select the file from here and then select choose and that will be printed over here. And then I'm using a semicolon so that I don't want to see the whole list printed in my notebook. I just want to suppress the output. And when I execute that, by pressing shift enter you execute your command so now that excel sheet is imported inside my mathematica notebook ready to be analyzed explored visualized let's go forward so this is how if you want to see that you have accurately and correctly imported your uh, file into mathematica notebook you can say, okay, let me examine the data first so that I'm sure that this is imported correctly. So this is my variable where I stored it. And this is how I give the span. So this is basically showing one span five, like one to five. So give me from this data variable values which are one to five. And you see, it gives you the first five values of that data set object. And now because you have imported this as a hierarchical in nature, so I can 
use all those SQL type commands to find anything out of that. So for example, if I say, okay, FIFA data, which is my variable, and I say function argument, and I say, okay, group by. So group by is a function which will group your data, and I say group by country. So if I write exactly like this, with a capital C, I can get all the data now grouped by country. So I can see over here, in, there are certain countries like Argentina, Belgium, Brazil, Denmark, and every country is given a specific date, and there are like 301 values corresponding to each country. So I can see and visualize that I have been able to correctly import all of my data into my notebook. Let's move forward and learn about many types of different plot types. In many cases, you will only need one line of code to make a chart. For a sneak peek, see, if I just want to draw a specific country, so I just give don't worry about the code at this moment. We are going to discuss this code more in detail in the coming examples, and you will learn how to do that. Just understand at this moment how quickly you can uh, search your data based on the country and then draw it into a graphical representation. Or you can move forward and say, okay, I want to see the data of all the values. So we know that the data set had seven countries data in that, and I can draw that into one simple plot. If this code doesn't make any sense yet, don't get worried, as you will be able to learn and develop similar graphs by the end of this course. So let's move forward. So, in the experimental sciences, data collected from experiment are very important and they need to be visualized in a form of a graph. For example, uh, there is some data on the speed of a body at certain points in time. You can visualize this data in a tabular form like you see in an Excel or in any other numerical display graph, but this doesn't show the uh, trends or the insights about this data, which is hidden inside it. So even this table representation is doing a great way of displaying the exact values, but it is very poor way to understand the underlying patterns that these value represent. In Wolfram language, by using just a function called list line plot, I can just see how it is. So you see, I save them under different variables. So this is my speed one test, this is my speed two. And I can say, okay, just give me, give the range of this. So speed one is my range, and I can see how this graphs look like. And then I can add more functionality into that, or options into that. For example, mesh is an option, and I can say mesh is all, and maybe the mesh style is red and you can see now I have every data point represented together in that form. Maybe one data set, speed 2 is another data set and I can have this directly into Wolfram. So questions on that. Suppose these are two tests and you want to take a mean of those to, call, to uh, find that as well. So we have a function called mean and you say, okay, give me the mean and the range is speed one and speed test two. So you get the mean. Now you see it gives you the exact values. If you want to have the numerical values, just wrap a function called n and you will have the numerical values for this. And if you wrap all of this in a function called list line plot, which we have been doing before, now I can have the mean of those two tests. And there are many other options which you can do and you can add. For example, you say, okay, now I want to see the mean and I also want to see the actual two tests as well. So it becomes a range. So range is 
given in a curly braces and I say okay give me speed 1 also give me speed 2 also and then you can have now all of these three together where one is showing that me and the others are the two different ranges of that now so I will not tell all the options but I'll tell you some of the options which you will be needing very much specifically into your work for example you want to see the legends for this so there's a function called plot legends and you say that okay I need this plot legends to be a list where it has to be the first is the mean the second is the uh, test one and the third is the test and you can see now I have blue line in the mean. I have test one in um, this color and I have test two in the green color as well. So you can add many options or you can add as much options as you want in, into that. So now sometimes you also need to draw the graph where you want to see the response with respect to x-axis like it is not a, like a time series type of a range it has a specific value like at this specific x you need an x uh, uh, you have a specific y value so basically in this format what you can do i can say okay the test one is basically i can write a function called transpose and i can say okay on one axis is my time and on the other axis is my speed. So basically, uh, this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. So now I have a different set of ranges where I have an x-axis and a corresponding y-axis. x-axis and a corresponding y-axis. And then I want to take this and see that into, uh, into a uh, line chart also. I can just say, give me a line list list line plot <laughs> list line plot of this test one and now this is specific to this value this is very important when you have a uh, your data in a format where you are trying to do specific values on the x-axis and you have the specific values on the y-axis let me also show you a couple of more things how to give the labels on your uh, uh, chart and how to add certain details into that so for example, you want to add a plot label to that. So there's a function called plot label and you just give something like this is the graph of speed versus time. And you see, you can see there's a plot label available over here. And you say, okay, I also don't want to tell my uh, viewers about what is on the X axis and what on the Y axis. So I can have like a, a frame lib frame label over here and I can say okay this my frame label is a list because I want to add both the x and the y axis and the x axis is like time in seconds and on my y axis it is speed which is in meter per second maybe. and maybe you want to have like a, a theme of this plot you can also set so maybe the plot theme and you see when I say plot theme it gives me a couple of options over here maybe I want to have a, like a detailed uh, type of a plot theme and I can do that maybe it's access label yeah so it's axis label, which will give it speed on the y-axis, on the x-axis, and I have the plot label as well. I can change this plot theme to different, like detail. I can change it to web style, and there are certain features. If you want to know more about these features, what they are, uh, you can go into the help menu in uh, 
documentation center and look what other options are there. There are like hundred of the options which you can, you can do. But these are a couple of the ones which I uh, normally, in the normal practice, these are used over, over here. And let me also tell you what is the difference between uh, a plot uh, label or maybe in the next example it will come. So this is how you can do your uh, trends and things you can display in Wolfram language. But sometimes your data is not interpolating in a continuous manner. It is more like a step function. So for example, uh, uh, for example, in this case uh, represented here, where there is a, like a voltage thing. Or in a, in, a, in a football match or in a soccer match, the scores are not going linearly. It is a step increase. For that type of visualizations, you can use a list step plot. You can just give the range of your data. You can give the axis label what it show. And you can also show the ticks. So ticks are because what values you want to show over here. So I say, okay, give me the ticks. Range 1 to 10 means like I don't want to type 1, 2, 3, 4 to all the 10. It will just give me all 1 to 10 values and 0 on the x and y, 1 on the y axis. So you can use list step plot and some of these options over here. Another option which I want to show you and discuss with you is called the stack list plot. So what stack list plot does is it is basically a line chart in which lines do not overlap because they are accumulative at every point. So a stack line chart displays series as a set of points connected by a line. The values are represented on the y-axis and the categories are always displayed on the x-axis. So for example, you have a data like we have the sales of certain brands like Mac, iPhone, iPad and other products by Apple in the last 12 months, every month data. So it's just a randomized data. And you want to see how this, the cumulative results of my uh, sales looks like in a, in a year for each and every product. So you can use a stack list plot, which will give you an accumulative graph of your products and you can add project legends. So when you add legends, the every legend will come over here telling you how much is that. And you can also change the image size or you can also set the image size. So you, you can also drag it and like this and also show. But if you want to say, okay, when my this, I go in a presentation, every time every projector might have a different frame, uh, byte set, uh, bit settings. So I want to have a constant display on that. You can specify it in the image size and every size the image will be corresponding to that as well. So another type of a line chart can be a date list plot. So date list plot is basically uh, when you have a date on the x-axis and you have a certain specific value on the y-axis. So this is the basic, the generic way of how you give a date list plot function. So this is a function plot. Uh, function and then you give a range of your value where on one axis x axis there is a specific date and on the y axis there is a corresponding value like today this value tomorrow this value yesterday this value and then you can have a list line plot over here so there is always a built-in functionality in wolfram language that can be used to get data directly into your wolfram language uh, in your uh, notebook so here is an example of getting a weather data of Chicago from 1st Jan 2020 to date. So I can call a weather data function. I can say give me Chicago and I need the temperature for 2020. And it will give me a time series, which is on a value is on a minimum increment. And I can see there are how many data points are there. And then I can make a list plot. And this time what I'm doing, I'm giving it a range of list. I want to compare the temperatures between Chicago and Seoul. So I can say, okay, give me the data of Chicago. Correspondingly, give me the temperature for Seoul, South Korea. And then I want to have a comparison plot together. 
So both the ranges are displayed together. And then you see here, I'm using the same plot style, but I'm using another function now, style. So even within that, I can use certain directives. So I can say, okay, this plot style should have a style where the, this will should be bold, black, and then I can use like slash n so that it gives a break. So it's like and uh, you hitting an enter between the two lines. So it breaks from here and do that. So I can change it to any style. I could say, okay, if I want to have this red, you want to have in, in italic or you want to have in any other type of a, um, any other type of a, even a language like Korean language or Thai language or Malaysian language. You can also type in that over here also and give that directive to this uh, under the under the style command. You can change the uh, font like Arial or anything like that. So there are a lot more things you can play around. So you, you want to make your uh, graph more aesthetically pleasant, you can do that. Now comes to a very interesting thing, two axis plot. So what is two axis plot? So two axis plot is sometimes you have a data like in the previous example, see here, I'm showing both of this data together, but they are very comparable. So the values on the y-axis are close, close together. But what happens if I had a data set where the value of one would be far, far away? So for example, I want to have the temperature and the wind speed on the same graph. Now this has different units, different values it will be very hard to see both of them together in one plot. So I should have the flexibility where I can set the both, like I can have a different uh, values on the x-axis, oh sorry, on the y-axis, and also uh, different on the other side of the y-axis, and I can show them together. So I'm sharing here with you a package, not by me, but someone else has created this two-axis plot package which I have, I will import into my notebook. So I will share the link of this package in my, uh, in the database from where you downloaded the ex, uh, uh, data files. I will share this package on the same link. So you can download it from there also, and then you can also place it into your uh, package file in the Mathematica kernel, and you can utilize this also. So what this package is doing, and of course, you can write your own packages also. So it's doing is taking two data sets and then drawing that on the same graph. So for example, I have this data. So what this data is, it's just a values. And I have then different randomly data over here. And you see, when I'm sh using a list line plot, it doesn't make a very statical thing because the values of one graph are so high from the values of the other graph. It, is, it, it doesn't make it more statically present. Do I have an option where I can have one variable over, uh, values over here for this graph, and maybe for this, I have a different values over here. So I can use this two axis list line plot, and you can see now this one is going by these values, and this one is going by these values. So it is most aesthetically uh, visible now, presentable now. One more thing, because I use the show function, you might be saying, okay, what is show? Show is basically what doing is, it's just taking these two plots and then showing on top of each other. That is all this show function is doing. So let's take another example and understanding, and what I want to tell show over here is the understanding of your data is very important. You might say, okay, Farid, I, I using the same commands you use, but I'm not getting the result. The reason will maybe most probably that your data is in a different format, maybe in a different uh, values hour are mentioned over here, which you need to know before you do any type of analysis over here. So let's take an example over here. So what my objective over here will be to compare the mean daily temperature and the wind speed of Chicago city in the month of March. So I'm again calling the 
weather data function. I'll say, okay, Chicago, I need the mean temperature for the month of March, and I want the mean on a daily basis. Similarly, I get the data for Chicago, and I get that data into another variable, and I say, okay, give me the, the data in that and save it into this. Now, what happens if I draw both of these together? Error comes in. You say, oh, Farid, you did the same thing above and now you're doing the same thing, but the error is coming over here. But you also need to know the call from language tells you what type of error it is saying. It is saying because they're both of the variables have the same functions, like it was in uh, the temperature of Seoul and the temperature of Chicago were both in degree Celsius. But here, the temperature is in degree Celsius and the wind speed is in kilometer per hour and they are incompatible units. So they cannot be drawn on the same y-axis. Now I'll say, okay, what can I do? So what I think is if I just take away these units from the data and I only pass the data set into my this, so then my language will see only see the values and not that. So, you know, we have a function called quantity magnitude and what quantity magnitude does is just take the numerical value of the data set and now you see when I draw it I get the graph where I have the temperature and the wind speed but now it is not that aesthetically good because in that in this specific case the values on the y-axis are almost comparable, so I can see them. But what if these values are so far away? So I can, at this specific moment, use the two-axis line plot on this same example. And I do that. And it doesn't work. Now you say, now why it is not working? We have taken care of this thing. The question is that this package only takes data types. In Wolfram language, the list line plot can take us time series. It understand what time series is and it will make a plot of that. But in this specific pack package for two axis list plot, it only takes the data, as I mentioned over here. It only takes the data. This specific package doesn't allow for the time series. And that is why this error is coming over here. So understanding what your fun function is and how your uh, uh, function will be entered is something which is very important to understand. So how can I fix this problem? Okay, this is a time series. So in, instead of time series, I need to have the values over here. So I need to get the value of this specific temperature. So I can say, okay, give me the values. I don't want to have the time series. I want to have the values over here and you can say I can still get the quantity array. Now this specific function will not take the quantity array. It will only take the data. What I do, I'll then change this into a quantity magnitude as well. And then what I'll get is just the data range. And then I'll maybe I'll say it, okay, temp two. And similarly for the another cheat tip I'll tell you. If you press Command L, it will just take the top input and display it again. So this is my Vinci and I say, okay, this is for the wind. So now I have these two. Now if I use this two axis list line plot and I'll pass this as temperature of Chicago variable and this Vinci variable. Now you see I get the graph. So understanding of your data is very important. And here is a link of how to generate plots. If you want to write your own function, how you can do that. So I've mentioned a link over here. And I, I will try to show you how it look. Try to get this into my 
main screen and due to technical difficulty I cannot show you the main screen for my uh, for this but this link is there you will be able to see how this specific uh, function if you have to define your own function how you could do that this is also available in the Wolfram language documentation uh, sheet okay so with this I come to the conclusion of the tutorial part of this section I've told you how to do certain specific visualizations or like what is line chart how it is mentioned and how you do that now what we are going to do over here is now we are going to take specific exercises we are going to do specific examples on the real life data set so all of you must have downloaded uh, ex, uh, data file named museums so this exercise will be basically on that data set so I'll give you a scenario and then we will work together on that how we can uh, do this uh, analysis on uh, on it so suppose I'm hired by the city of Los Angeles and they want to make decisions to manage uh, the budgets of the museum. So the first project focuses on these four museums and they give me the data for that. And then they will ask me certain specific questions which I have to visualize and tell them based on that they will be able to uh, make certain data driven decisions. So the first step will be to load the data. So in this example what I'm doing over here is I'm using a simple import. So last time you have seen when I was importing a FIFA file, I use semantic import and it created a data set. In this example, I will use the simple import function. The objective is for you to learn how to utilize if you only use the import function. And now similarly, I'm giving it a function path where my file is. And now you see I give it a another option over here this you know in Excel sheets what happens there are multiple sheets attached to it like sheet one sheet two sheet three okay so if I am if I want to import all of them together I can do that or if my data is only in the sheet one or I just want to use the data from the sheet one of that Excel chart, I can say okay I only need the data from that file so for example, your Excel file might have pictures and some other things. I don't need that. I only need the data from my this file and I only need the sheet number one. Anything on that sheet number one which comes in this data is now imported and I have saved it into a variable. First step done. Second step is to understand your data. At least you should know what the data is about, how it is uh, formatted so let's look at the headers of the data first I can see okay so what I'm doing over here I'm using a part function so using double brackets does is part like take I can use like take this from this variable uh, or I can use this double uh, brackets and I can say take take what first first row all columns this is a cheat I have learned first row all columns and I get the headers so these are my like the top headers it has a date it has museum name first museum name second museum name third museum name and the fourth museum name let's look at the first data five data values again one till five take one till five from museum values and I want to see it in a form of a data set and these are my headers and corresponding values so I can see now I also want to see that all the data is imported I can also use a function called length on this function it says okay all the 76 entries have been successfully into my notebook now if I want to see so if I as I know there are 76 entries I want to see the last entries to be sure that how latest this data is so I'm just calling the last 
span like from 71 to 76 and I can see that I have the data for the month of March 2020 is available. So almost a very refreshed data is available to me uh, over here. And then from here, I can maybe quickly, if someone want to ask how many uh, total visitors comes on it, I can just use a total function on this data. And this is a slot function. So you see, instead of putting like one, two, three, four, or five, I just use a slot function, like an empty slot. And I say, okay, map this slot. This is a, like a map function. So map this slot on two, three, four, five. So what is on the second column, third column, fourth column, and fifth column? This is second column, third column, fourth column, fifth column. So rather than writing the same command for everyone, I just say, give it a slot and I say, okay, map this slot on these things. And when this comes here like two, it will be for two. When it comes three, this will be for the three. And this way I can see the total for all of these museums values, starting from the first value, which is in the January of 2014, every month, 76 months, these are the total number of visitors. So I now know, have a little bit understanding of how my data looks like. So now the main things come. The museum board comes to me and they say, okay, the Firehouse Museum, like one of the museum, they say that they ran an event in 2014, which brought an incredible number of visitors. So the number of visitors increased in that year because they ran a campaign. And based on that, they are asking for an extra budget so that they do the same campaign again and then the number of uh, visitors will come again. Now, just looking at the data, it can it is not visible. So having a trend view of that might be able to understand the directors of the museum if that makes sense or not. So they ask me because I am their data scientist and they want to me ask me, okay, show us that is this claim by the firehouse museum is valid? Should we give them more budget for campaign or not? So what I'm doing over here, I'm using the same basic. There are much, much better ways to do that. But just to let you understand the how you can play along as you think, I'm just giving a very detailed example for that. So I say, okay, let's take out the data for everything. So I say, okay, let's take the month's data. So month data is all the months on the first column. We know this is the first column. So this has all the month e values. So I save that in a variable month. This is the American, um, tropical imprinting center data on the two. So I say, okay, save this data in this variable. So every museum is, the data of every museum is saved into a separate variable using the same command, which I told you over here. Now, once I have that, you know, we have a date list plot. How the date list plot works is you need to have a corresponding X value date and a corresponding y value the value so what i'm doing over here date list plot of months and instead of giving any specific museum i say give me all a slot and now in slot i'm saying all these museums and then i'm adding some plot legends so that the director understand what my graph will be and when i execute this you see now i have a where I can have the plot legends and I can see we are talking about Firehouse Museum. So let's take Firehouse Museum and see over here. So yeah, they were right in their claim that in 2014, they did something which the number of visitors increased drastically. So based on this, maybe they are able to make a good data driven decision. They can do that. I can also create using the same thing, I can make a small animation of that. So what I'm doing over here, I'm just changing this variable as a changeable variable. And I say, okay, this variable starts with this, but I want to 
manipulate this. So when I manipulate this, this variable will be always changing. And I say, okay, this variable is the month. So if I play on this variable, you can see it is. So you can make a visualization in a animation out of that as well. This shows how the trend is going from a one specific point to another. You can stop at any value. You can change this and you can take this. So let's deep down into the code of this. So this is the same code. Date list plot on x axis is the month value. On the y axis is a slot where it is taking the values from each museum. Just the plot legends to show them the, which line is corresponding to which one. And then n. n is my variable over here. So I'm saying n should start from a 12 so that at least I have a month, a yearly value to represent. It should be displays at months over here. And this is the increment, one value increment. And this is just the save definitions at true so that every time, even without running, I will have something in the values over here. So the, based on this solution, the uh, board of directors can make a data driven decision over here. Now let's take another example. And they want to assess the seasonality on that also. So maybe the employees at a certain uh, museum uh, want to do um, staff hiring and they want to see what are the months then the utilization is more so they need to have more staff on their panel and what is the effect of that on certain things. So the solution for that can be you create a line chart for this specific museum over time and then you can same you can have a date list plot x axis y so here I can because this is only one I can just add one here also but because I'm coming from the top I said okay let's keep the same thing over here now plot legends is only one and I want to see that and now they want to want to understand that the seasonality is the September to February is more people or March to August more people so the easiest way to do that if I could have a grid line so I can have a grid line which is from March of month to the August of month I can you can see that yes the number of visitors are increasing over here if I change this value to another year maybe 2018 and I can see yes the number of visitors are increasing in the previous year also I can also have the um, grid lines for all of these together as well and show them easily so in this way just by adding certain small options also you can make uh, insights about your data and make trends of your data as well if you have any questions keep on uh, asking in the comments once i'm done it's hard for me to see the questions and do this i'm a single man show right now <laughs> so I, I will look at the uh, questions in, in a while but in this way you can do certain type of analysis so this is one exercise now we will move on and i'll show you the second exercise over here we'll discuss about that and we'll take the and uh, the second data set into action over here and we'll see how we can perform the data visualization on that specific uh, data as well so here is the second exercise let's give me one second for a break okay so in this second exercise what we are going to do is we are going to see how you can plot the uh, scatter plots and how to show the regression lines on that and how you can take all of this together so we'll work with the data set of insurance charges so you know we i have provided the, the file as well so the first step is to load the data and this time i'm loading it using semantic up import and i'll show you how easy now will be for me to make visualization and make analysis on this type of 
uh, data set because now everything is coming into me in a hierarchical nature. I do not have to fetch out each and everything from, from small portion into rows and columns and saving them. And But instead of that, I can use like SQL type of queries, select this, use this, use that, and I'll show you how we can do that. So the first thing first, let's import the data. So let's import the data, semantic import, just giving the insert file path where this file is in your hard disk or in your data, you can call this. This is, we know is a CSV file, but now it comes as a data set object. So first data is here. Second step, let's review the data. Similarly, let's see if we have correctly uploaded the data. Let's take the first five values of this data. These are my association keys, certain values corresponding to each. We know there's visa age, sex, body mass index. If they have children, are they smoker, not smoker, which region they are, how much charges they pay, and the total number of data entries as well. So there are almost 1338 uh, data values over here also. So we know that we have successfully uh, uploaded the data into our notebook. The next step is, is to ask me, okay, is there any uh, relationship between the uh, body mass index and how much they pay? So how you can do that? We can have a list plot. So rather than having a list line plot, we will now have a list plot. So on which we will have BMI values on the x-axis and we have insurance charges on the y-axis and we can have a scatter plot. So what we are doing over here is I'm saying I'm using this data which is called insurance data where we saved over here and I'm saying I'm making two slots. One slot for the third value and one slot for the seventh value. So if you go and see into your data, what is the third value here? BMI. What is the seventh value? Four, five, six, seventh value are the charges. So on the x-axis, the third value, which is BMI. On the y-axis, the seventh value, which is charges. Map that to this data and axis label are BMI and charges. So BMI is here, charges is here, and then I can see a scatter plot of how the BMI values are. So what do you observe from this? So I'm not a very good, good data uh, and, uh, statistician, but based on this data, I see there is there seems to be some positive uh, correlation between the BMI values and the charges. As the BMI increases, the number of charges that someone is paying is also increasing. So the first thing you may ask, so, okay, to double check this, can we add a regression line to it? So we are in Wolfram language, we can do that. So I say, okay, let's use a linear model fit, same data values on X and Y, and give me a fitted model. So it gave me a fitted model over here. I can see the how much, how many properties of this fitted model I have. So I can, all of these properties of this model is available to me. I can see over here. I'm a layman, so I only understand ANOVA table. So I'll show this ANOVA table to you. And from here, you may be able to guess, is this a good fit or a bad fit? You can also have a visualization of the fit residuals, and you can do the filling to the axis, bottom, or above as well. And now you have this linear model. The other thing is to show this on the top of your graph as well. So I told you we have a show function. So what I'm doing is show the list plot of BMI charges and then the plot of the fitted model. So I can have the regression line on top of my graph as well. And from here, I can make any observation or I cannot make any observation. It, it really depends on how you look at your uh, thing. So we also know that this data is also divided into smokers and non-smokers also. 
So maybe we also want to understand the relation of the charges on the people who are smokers versus non-smokers. So we can also divide them and we can see them both together. So you see, now I can use these type of things. So what this is, this is a list plot. So now I'm using another function called legended. So legended is doing is also giving me legends. So this is giving me the legends for number three, which is uh, number three is BMI. Number seven is the charges. And I'm from here I say, okay, only select when the smoker is yes. Because we know the smoker is either a yes or a no. So in this first data set, I will only select a value of where this variable smoker is, is equal to yes. And I'll map that as a smoker, give that the legend. Similarly, using the same above one, and I'm saying, okay, give me the smoker, the value is no. And then you can see I can have a distribution of non-smokers presented here and the smoker presented here, which is very logical that the smokers as the BMI more weight they gain on, they pay more charges, whereas the non-smokers, if they have more weight, they pay less charges on that. This is very obvious from this specific graph. But to further emphasize the fact, we can use regression lines for each category as well. So, you know, we can divide the data in both of them. So we can have the data for smoker no, and we can see a fitted model here for non-smoker. Similarly, we can have a model for a smoker by selecting smoker is equal to well, yes, and we can have a fitted model for the smoker data set. And now we can show all of these together. So all the four things, plot of fitted model of non-smoker, plot of fitted model of smoker, and I say this is for orange, this is blue, and these are, and we can have the regression lines on each distribution as well. And you can observe from here that the regression line for smokers have a much steep slope. So the more their BMI goes, the more charges they pay relative to the line of the non-smokers. So like this, you can on, this is just like a data set for insurance, smoking. Now, if you have your own lab experiments, you do certain type of your own data values, you can do certain similar analysis on your own data values as well. So these are the two examples I wanted to share with you in this in this today's session. So in the next session, we'll be talking more about the charting visualizations, how to uh, visualize the distributions like histogram, smooth density, density plots, and if and we will also see two similar exercises where we will fetch in the data and try to visualize on based on that specific data how the things goes. So uh, that is for today. Let me quickly go and take a look at the questions. So if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I request you to subscribe. In that way, I do not have to give you the links again and again. You already know when I am online and you can do that. Hi, Gobi from Malaysia. How are you doing? So, uh, let me look at some of the questions. I can't find two X's line plot in Mathematica. Yeah, because this is a package file. I will, I will attach this package file to the data set, uh, data place where I give you all the other uh, files and you can, you'll be able to uh, download it from here. So it will be a .m file, which you can take it from there and you can upload it into your uh, Mathematica. Okay, so if you are using, uh, where he's asking like uh, where you uh, save this, so it goes in the package file. So what I think you can do is, if in you are in Mathematica, you can uh, write path. So it will give you where your kernel files are. And from here, you see where the packages are. Just copy it from here. Go to your uh, search. 
insert you paste this and when you paste this over here there you will be I think taken to that specific folder yeah so I can see the folder but it has got yeah so it will take you to this folder directly so write dollar sign path into your Mathematica it will give you the path where the files are saved from there look at the system file so I'm using Mac so it will be same for you as well in the kernel in the packages in the packages just um, either drag it or save the dot m file so it will be two access list dot m file which you can just uh, save it in, in here so I think that answers your uh, question okay uh, thank you Rosie for the complaint uh, for the compliments thank you Shen for the uh, thing so uh, do remember to subscribe to my channel and uh, next week same time uh, on uh, Tuesday morning we will continue with the uh, part 2 and in the meantime if you have any uh, questions do drop me an email uh, if you have any specific questions I will maybe able to take that uh, question and bring that question into into the live session and we, we can discuss more on that uh, thank you so much for attending me today do remember to subscribe to my channel it gives me motivation so that I can give more and more uh, talks like this online so thank you everyone and have a lovely day thank you bye bye